What's going on guys? This is one of those cool projects that I love to do. These are bench seats from Notre Dame Stadium. A viewer in South Bend had them and said, hey, I'd like to make a guitar body out of them. So we're going to get going on this today. We are making a T-style one pickup guitar. Uh, we're actually doing two of them. We've got two seats. So we should have some fun doing this. We're going to rip this up. Uh, this has already been glued and sealed. And what we're gonna do is cut these to about five eighths and then glue them onto a back. The wood is a little bit spongy on the back side, so I can't do kind of the typical whiskey barrel while I do the top, core, and bottom. This, I don't think, is going to hold a neck all that well. It's a soft red cedar, so let's take this upstairs and get working. This wasn't glued properly, so we're gonna resaw it on the Laguna HD. You can see it pop as it cuts through. We're then gonna saw off five eighths. We're just gonna keep the plate. And then once we saw it, we're gonna run it through the drum sander, get it flat. And for some reason, it didn't film it. So here's the picture of it running through. And then we're gonna take this over to the joiner and get a nice edge on it so we can glue it back up. A little type on wood glue. And there we go. So we're gonna do an alder core on this and we only need uh, about three quarters of a piece of wood. So we'll resaw some eight quarter. I have two pieces here that we're gonna use We'll glue that up as well, run that through the surface sander, just like that. Clamp the top to the back, and then route the body to the template using the Infinity Cutting Tools 2 inch bit, pattern bit, on my standard template. Always worried as we go around these edges that something's going to bite and spit off but that didn't happen today so that's good just take it slow and try and go around the edges as best you can I didn't like the way the alder looked plain so I actually ended up taking a cap from the rest of the seat that I had and glued that on and it gives the front and the back at least the same look so after routing and re-gluing on a new back, we took this to the rigid oscillating spindle sander and cleaned this up with some 120. And then we go up to 220 and get a nice smooth fine edge on this. A little back and forth and we're nice and clean. We're then gonna put a quarter inch edge on it, on the front and the back. Sand up the sides some more. Get the power sander going. And we'll start with, usually I do 180 to 220, and then depending on the body, we'll go up to 320. We'll then take this downstairs and do some routing. I've got sort of a standard template here that does the routing in sort of a, the shape of a control plate without taking out too much from the back. So this is a new template I've been using. So we'll route the inside, flip it around, and then we'll route the outside of the control plate. And then this is a Craftsman with a quarter inch bit top bearing bit that just cleans it out. Here we're gonna do a standard control plate and just drill for a tone and a volume. We're only doing one pickup in this guitar. So we'll get a 5 16 bit and drill out. Notice how I have the backing board there so I don't get any blowout. 
and then we're going to just route down uh, a little bit to clean up where I drilled. So I'm going to leave a little bit more than a quarter inch. And just double check with some pots, make sure it's not too spongy or going to fall apart. That is key. And we're going to drill the output jack. Start with the 5 16th bit. And then I do this stepper bit that drills out to 7 eighths. This makes my life so significantly easier. I wish I had found this trick years ago. And I'll come back with a 7 eighths bit and just clean it out. Then I'm going to grab my standard template and route for the bridge and the neck. Then we're going to drill out the neck. So I've got a template that I've used for many, many years. And then we're going to use my laser level to line up the neck and drill for the bridge. And that was key in this. We're then going to age the back and sides of the body to try and match the front. We use this aging agent and it, it's close. The patina on the front is hard to match, uh, but this at least gives the body a similar look. The alder is really the strength of the body, which is why we had a, a little bit of that thicker core. And then I wanted the back and the top to match to some degree. We'll go live back in video to show the finish. All right, so the owner used this Benjamin Moore Stay Clears Acrylic Poly on the face. We're going to use the same on the back. The guys at Benjamin Moore said to really stir this stuff up. So I shook it up and they said to stir it as well. So we did that. I don't know what this stuff is. I'm assuming it's a water base. Didn't even really read it. <laughs> All right, we're gonna go on the back and the sides. He said there's four coats on the front. I don't think we'll do all that on the back. Probably just put two coats. I do like that the darkening agent matches the front just enough. It's not perfect but it never would be. The reason I'm doing this cover at the same time as the back is as I'm moving a little bit of the aging agent around to make sure it looks somewhat the same. Stuff dries relatively quickly. And here is the first Notre Dame caster all set up. I ended up adding Ferrellis on the back after I put the finish on, he requested that. So what's amazing about this body is how dented up this gets. It really takes a dent pretty good. Uh, the top definitely has a ton of ridges, but I got the bridge flat. We'll get some pics from him and post them as he gets it all complete. So just another Way cool custom guitar. We'll get the second one done. Thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next video.